So, of course, my shopping day would fall on a blustery and cool day in Marathon, Florida, making for quite the wet dinghy ride ashore. I'm about to uh, head out for Biscayne Bay, Miami, and so I'd like to top off on fresh, fresh food and also uh, top up my water tanks before I leave. So here we are, anchored right behind Marathon, Florida. Um, we indeed have southeasterly winds, and it's still okay here. The anchorage is a little rolly, but not bad. And we're planning to sail to Biscayne. Uh, probably anchor, anchor just right off No Name Harbor behind Key Biscayne. That's a run of about 100 miles. So, so let's see what our weather is looking like. Uh, right now we have southeast winds, which wouldn't be too bad. We'd have to tack for a while to get out to get out into the Gulf Stream, uh, so we get a boost from the Gulf Stream to carry us up to uh, toward Biscayne. Now, of course, the the, the coast uh, curves to the north, so the southeasterly winds become more favorable as we move along. But it's going to be on the nose, so. And we're, this is what the European model is saying. So let's see what it looks like by late afternoon. And we still got southeast winds. And how about early evening? Uh, southeast, but coming even a little more kind of east-southeast and picking up. So let's see what tomorrow morning looks like. Okay, now we're back to true southeasterlies. Yeah, coming south, almost south southeast. So, my plan is right now what it's looking like by the European model is to take off very early tomorrow morning, and um, and as we get uh, throughout the day, if we move along, we're still going to have southeasterly winds. Let's say around two in the afternoon, uh, we should be able, once we get out into the Gulf Stream, we should have a beam reach turning into a broad reach. And it's 100 miles. Now, normally that's a 24-hour run. But, and, uh, but you can see as we get into early Wednesday morning, the wind's coming much more subtly. And also, if we're beam reaching and then we got a couple of knots of Gulf Stream current, we'll probably do this run in less than 24 hours. So possibly getting in around the middle of the night on Tuesday, if we leave early Tuesday morning, say around 7 o'clock. Um, and it's fairly easy um, with open CPN. It's not hard to get in through the old Florida Channel, and the anchorage right off. You can anchor right outside of No Name Harbor. That's actually fairly decent anchorage, and um, that's not hard to get into either. So, and uh, you can see the reason uh, as we get into Wednesday, these winds are going to come southwest. You can see we got a front approaching right here. So by the time we get to Thursday, all right, we definitely want to be in before Thursday morning because then we're going we're to get a big pulse of strong northwest winds. So, so we want we want to be in before that. Well, so the winds have swung south southeast as forecast, and we're losing the shelter of Boot Key. So we got a bit of a chop running here, and that makes it a little tricky weighing anchor, uh, because with the boat coming up and the anchor road suddenly coming taut, um, you want to be careful you don't get your fingers in the wrong place there. And you, you can see the, uh, the mud in the water, the spade anchor just broke out, and we are on our way. Elmalee, she's a little sluggish with with uh, some sloppy water and just her mainsail up. She's struggling to come around, but she's coming around slowly. 
pull up on the slack back stay there. Not so important if you don't have the headsail set. Uh, but I do that uh, just out of routine and habit. Many of you have requested a video on my self-steering wind vane. I did in fact do a video on that, but that was quite some time ago. In fact, I think it was my second or third video. So it's time for an update. Now as far as the design and construction of the wind vane, I have a detailed account of that on my website, boothbyboats.com, and I will briefly review that here. Now this type of wind vane can only be constructed on a boat with an outboard or stern hung rudder. But given that, it is by far the simplest type of self-steering wind vane you can construct. And it simply consists of mounting a trim tab, which is a high aspect ratio blade, on the trailing end of the rudder with a couple of gudgeons there. And uh, that'll be connected to a shaft which will go up, up up, by the top of the rudder head there and somewhere there an air paddle uh, will be connected to it. Now notice there's one detail that the air paddle has to be connected right at the point where the axis of rotation of the rudder and the axis of rotation of the trim tab intersect. If you don't do that um, the wind vane will not steer properly. Now as far as how the wind vane works, it's mechanically quite simple. Uh, you'll set the air paddle for a certain apparent wind angle. And as the boat naturally will wander off course, the apparent wind angle will change. And this will cause the air paddle to turn the trim tab. And because of geometry, the trim tab has a lot of leverage over the rudder. So the turning of the trim tab will then turn the rudder in the opposite direction as it turns out and the turning of the rudder will steer the boat back onto course or will bring the boat back to the original apparent wind angle. Now as far as the construction of the trim tab, I started off with two pieces of mahogany and bolted it through with four quarter twenty bolts, a five eighths inch stainless steel shaft and you got a little bit of uh, leading edge there that gives it some balance which gives the air paddle a little more leverage. Um, once attached, then I added more fairings and eventually encased the whole thing in fiberglass roving and epoxy and fared it smooth. So I made a nice, tall, high aspect ratio blade. So then the trim tab is, is attached to the rudder with a couple of gudgeons, which I made out of ash, and through bolted it through the rudder. And then there's an aperture in both gudgeons where the stainless steel shaft can pass through and put some grease in there to minimize friction because uh, friction is your biggest enemy to self-steering wind vanes uh, especially in light airs. Now the trickiest part for me was figuring out the air paddle and especially how to attach it. So the system I came up with was to have a counterweight and the air paddle attached to a block of wood and, and then I sawed, I bored a 5 8 inch hole uh, vertically through the block of wood and then I cut the block of wood about halfway up toward where the um, counterweight and air paddle are attached. So now uh, the 5 8 inch trim tab shaft can go through the block and move freely uh, and then what I did was I added two quarter twenty bolts with handles on one end and embedded nuts, nuts embedded in epoxy on the other so that when I turn those handles, it'll clamp the block onto the trim tab shaft. And that way, the air paddle will be engaged to the trim tab. So let's see how we actually engage the wind vane in practice. So I'm briefly just going to lash the tiller. And we're sailing along. We're on course. 
and I just note approximately where the air paddle, the angle the air paddle is at when we were on course. And then I'm going to turn those quarter 20 bolts with the handles and clamp the air paddle to the shaft. So the wind vane is now engaged. Now what I have to do is release those control lines. You see those are the two lines which simply hold the trim tab in place. I find that if you let the trim tab uh, uh, just trail along, for some reason or another, it'll often try to start steering the boat, even though it's not attached to anything. So I, I added those control lines. I find you want to be able just to keep the trim tab locked in one place uh, when you're not using the wind vane. Now I found with this type of wind vane, one of the trickiest things to get right were the tiller lashings and the shock cords. You see the green shock cords there. I find that with it, if you just let the tiller uh, go free with this type of steering vane, it will oversteer the boat. Uh, you'll tend to start steering a slalom course. So in order to keep a nice straight course, minimal amount of wanders, they would say, I find that you had to add those, uh, those lashings with the shock cords uh, to help keep, to keep the tiller from uh, swinging too far from side to side. And it took me quite some time to figure out that system, how big the shock cords. And you notice I have them running through blocks so I can double them and triple them up. Uh, and generally the more wind and the bigger the waves, uh, the more loops you want on the shock cords and the more tension you want on it. Um, but I can't really give you a formula for that because that's going to vary from boat to boat. And here I am just adjusting the tiller lashings a bit uh, to give it a little more weather helm or a little more lee helm. And in order to reset the vane, that's actually fairly simple. Once it's all set up and sailing along, then all I'll do is uh, I just adjusted my mainsail and then crawl back. And usually I, I will not completely release uh, the air paddle. What I'll do is just unscrew it a bit, just enough so it will move, and then just move the vane slightly and tighten it back. And, uh, and then just observe and see if, if the boat is now back on course. My previous self-steering wind vane was an Aries, which worked very well, better than this vane, in fact. It was also easier to use uh, to adjust the attitude of the air paddle. They just had these nifty little ratchet poles, so you could just pull, pull on lines leading to the cockpit and instantly make small adjustments in course. However, the Ares was much more complicated and difficult to maintain. Uh, this type of self-steering wind vane is just dead simple and something you can build yourself. Since I installed this wind vane in 2008, I've made 11 round trips from the East Coast to the Caribbean, and uh, now this cruise to the Florida Keys. Offshore, generally, generally I'll have the wind vane engaged about 95% of the time. So this, this vane has probably steered me somewhere around 40,000 miles. I can get it to steer in apparent winds as low as about 4 knots, provided I keep it greased. And it has also steered me in gale conditions. So for a solo sailor, a self-steering wind vane is an invaluable piece of equipment. And it is something you definitely want to choose carefully for your boat if you're planning to do a lot of ocean sailing. It is Monday, the 25th of February, 2020, and we are at around approximately 24 degrees, 47 minutes north, and 80 degrees, 29 minutes west. 
leaves us with about uh, 55 miles or so to run to Biscayne Bay. Uh, so we're almost halfway. We weighed anchor around 7.30 this morning from Marathon. And uh, it took us a little while to tack out, get off the shelf, and uh, start picking up the Gulf Stream current. We have favorable current now, but it's never really been that strong. So uh, we're doing five, five and a half knots to the water and kind of six to seven over the ground. So we seem to have about a knot, knot and a half in favor of favorable current. So uh, not, not the full strength, uh, two to three knots, or three to four knots in some places. So, um, so I'm not going quite as fast as I had hoped. Um, it is about uh, 3 in the afternoon, so hopefully we'll, we'll still make it in around midnight, a little after midnight tonight. Uh, these winds are easing up and the sea conditions are easing somewhat. You can see I'm still hanging on here. We're in the Gulf Stream. It's always shake, rattle, and roll in the Gulf Stream. It's always just lots of slop coming from everywhere. But these winds have eased up to kind of like 12 to 15. About 12 to 15 or so. Uh, we, we had winds the, most of this morning, kind of 18 to 20. Most of the buoy reports were 18 to 22 knots. And then up by Miami, up by Biscayne, Cowie rocks at uh, I think 22, gusting 24. So it, it's been pretty blowy out here. Uh, so it was nice of it to ease up some. Uh, makes the ride a little smoother. Um, so that's where we're at, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll make it in a little after midnight. Uh, we got another cold front coming. Hopefully the north, the northerlies won't be quite so bad as we get up to Biscayne. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, and uh, it's actually turning into pretty nice sailing now. So we'll enjoy the ride, and uh, we'll check in with you again later. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.